This march of beasts truly evokes the illustrations of Marie Sandex, where the wild things are. But instead of a parade of a king, we are for captives. This is not a story about a boy dressed as a wolf, learning to deal with anger, but a tale of a captive lover and the quest to free her. Essentially, Mario with a protagonist who is marginally hairier than an Italian plumber. Here we are, caught in a box. I've absolutely no idea why they've left us behind and taken her, and particularly why they've hung us from this tree, or even how they did it. Unless they had the hobbits when they were climbing up the trees to escape the wargs, just to tie us up there. A little token reference to get this started. Yeah. This is the sort of let's play you're getting yourselves in for, as we learn not to crawl or walk, but to jump. That indicates the kind of sort of beast, the monster, the animal that we are. Feral in the forest, and now free. Our protagonist looks like a shadow monkey, the corrupted Pokemon from the GameCube Pokemon Coliseum games, or maybe even a Karibo with lanky, gangly limbs that likes to eat flies. Kind of like a little toad. He's a fuzzball, if nothing else, climbing through the trees. What is it more primate than monkey? Primate. His claws are glowing, kind of reddish as he makes his way through these swamp lands. There's mushrooms, definitely Mario-esque. Fearsome looking beasts. I remember when I was younger, there was a poster of where the wild things were in our local library. I never managed to read the book myself. It always eluded me, even though it interested me so much. I suppose it was quite a fitting poster to have in a library, kind of in the kids section kind of to represent us escaping into our imagination to meet these wonderful creatures and tales and journeys and adventures that you'd go on. My first real experience with the, I suppose you would say, not plot, but the world of where the wildings are, was the 2009 Spike Jones movie, which it really stuck with me just how sad that was. I remember the, the, uh, the most poignant bit of the movie that has always stuck with me was where the kind of chicken monster has his arm ripped off by Carol, James Gandolfini's monster, and his only response is just kind of an accepting kind of, oh, that was my favorite arm. In a movie that kind of shows rage and frustration with the inevitable dying of the sun, that kind of acceptance of just, you will be pulled apart, you'll be pulled apart by this world was quite hard to deal with and accept. Particularly, I was 17 at the time that movie came out. I suppose, imagine an eight-year-old going to see it, what effect it would have then. I suppose there was controversy around the movie at the time it released, wasn't there? About whether it was acceptable for kids, and Jones defended it by saying, it was a movie about childhood, not for children. Which I think is fine. I would have shown my kids that. If I have, if I have kids, I think they'll... No, I won't say they'll be exposed to much worse. That makes me sound like I'd be a bad parent. But I think I'd be fairly lenient and liberal in the movies that they would watch. I almost look forward to watching them with my kids. The first time you get to show off seven or eight-year-old alien fantastic though when i was eight i saw the blair witch and it, it scared me to this day i do not like going for walks in the woods real woods not woods like this this wood is fantastic and beautiful so far 